Hey guys, so it had been a couple days since I had checked in about my uh, Huel experience. So I wanted to take an opportunity to do that. Uh, it is quarantine day 17 and Huel day 11. Uh, and, uh, you know, I am still obviously doing Huel. I'm still using it as a, a meal substitute. I decided to wear the lovely t-shirt that they sent. Uh, if you watch the unboxing video, you would have seen that they include some extra stuff in there like the shaker and the t-shirt. So uh, I suppose I am officially a Huligan now. Uh, and uh, I'm about to enter week number two of using Huel to replace at least two meals a day. Uh, I actually have used it to replace all three meals on most of those days, but at least two meals a day, usually breakfast and lunch, uh, it's really hard to uh, <laughs> to avoid eating dinner here where I, I'm staying now because uh, Rachel, who uh, is our cook, makes some delicious smelling and uh, delicious tasting meals and she always makes enough for everybody even if we tell her not to. So uh, it's one of those things where, oh wait, so you have some chicken for me and it smells delicious and it looks delicious and I could eat this shake, but I think I'm gonna have your chicken instead. And it's not that the shake isn't good, equally as good uh, as the chicken, uh, it's just that, <laughs> You know the chickens they're gonna be there and gonna be good for like a few minutes and that shake i can put back in the fridge for a while so you know it's one of those things i wanted to get into a couple topics uh, that i brought up in previous ones on this update uh number one uh i have been replacing the meals with huel uh and i have noticed uh, a couple of things that i want to point out nothing negative uh a and i think that that's surprising to me because i have been sick throughout this kind of procedure and i was torn on whether or not being sick was a good time to start a meal replacement like Huel, uh, or should I wait till I feel better? But essentially, the kind of the balance that I've struck now is realizing that I feel better on a lot of days, and even days that I don't feel great. I can't say that it's the Huel, it's the food that I'm eating. Like, I, again, go back to some of the previous updates where I've said, I feel much better than I generally do. And, you know, I like I said, I've been replacing two meals, uh, especially on weekends. I tend to splurge and for dinner, we'll order in. Uh, you know, we're trying to support some of the local businesses here and keep doors open so that when this whole thing is over, that we still have somewhere to go. So, you know, I want to be a participant in that. And, you know, it's a weird... It's a weird thing because I also thought that, hey, we'll be in quarantine, it'll be great, and it'll be easy to do this. But then we're at the point where there's still stuff open and I feel like I want to support the community. But at the same time, I'm having a great experience with Huel and I, and I don't want to replace the meal with an actual food meal. So, you know, one of those things. And I haven't always made good food choices. Uh, I have spent my life not making good food choices. So I'm not necessarily surprised about that fact. But, uh, you know, sometimes uh, we get junk food, we get pizza, uh, even if it's from a local place. And I can always tell the next day that I had something I shouldn't have had before, yeah, or the day before, or the meal before, if it was lunch and then it's later in the day. Uh, we got Red Chicks for lunch today, which is uh, like a local hot chicken place. I think Dave's Hot Chicken, uh, for those of you who know what that is. And I'm already feeling kind of sluggish and beaten down and ready for bed. And, and the days that I'm having Huel for all three meals, I don't feel that way. I feel like even right up until the point I'm about to go to sleep that I'm still on it. I still have a bunch of energy. I'm ready to go. And so like, it's a weird, it's a weird thing that like, I've noticed in times when I've been healthier before that I could always tell when I had uh, a splurge meal because it would hit me that way. And I don't feel like I'm changing that much by exchanging meals for Huel. Uh, and yet I still have that same experience. And that tells me that I am indeed getting the nutrition that I need because when I don't, my body is basically giving me a negative feedback and saying, hey, don't do that anymore. We prefer this other thing that you've been doing. And I realized that for five consecutive days last week, uh, I actually lived as a vegetarian. And I'm sure that doesn't sound like a lot to some people. Uh, it may seem crazy to some people too. But, you know, for me, it was outstanding because, again, I'm replacing Huel. Huel is a plant-based product, so there's no actual meat in it. And I'm using, for the most part, I'm using almond milk or oat milk or other plant-based milk products. Uh, I have, on occasion, rarely used actual like cow's milk. Uh, but I think that that still abides by the rule of vegetarianism because it's not hurting the animal in order to take it, again, depending on your perspective on things. But nonetheless, I, I'm so unfamiliar with the rules of vegetarianism, I can't even say for sure whether or not I'm following them correctly. And that is because 
I have never even considered that as a possible lifestyle. In fact, back uh, when I lost all of the weight and kept it off for a long period of time, back between 2008 and 2013 or so, I did that by basically doing the exact opposite. Uh, I was following the Atkins diet, and that is high protein, high fat, low carbohydrates. And a lot of the carbohydrates come from sugar. A lot of the carbohydrates you have in your diet are plant-based, uh, mostly grains, obviously. So I wanted to avoid the grains. But when I really got into eating and functioning on that lifestyle, I was having nearly nothing but meat. It was hard for me to work any kind of vegetable into the rotation. I would have eggs and sausage for breakfast. I would have like, like sandwich meat or like sliced meat and cheese for lunch. And for dinner, I would make like a hunk of meat, like steak or chicken or something. And I wasn't even thinking about adding the vegetables in. And on, on occasion, I would you know make this open-faced uh, lettuce sandwich that I liked. If I had a burger, I would use lettuce as the bun. But other than lettuce, and to some extent cucumbers too, I think, uh, and occasionally I uh, would mix in a banana, but banana was a lot of carbohydrates, so I tried to avoid it. It's just one of my favorite fruits, so I wanted to eat it as a treat sometimes. Other than that, I literally was eating almost no plants at all. It was just meat and dairy, and uh, both of those are very high fat. Uh, you know, I was tracking that along with my doctor at the time, and he was just basically like, listen, so weight loss, fantastic. On one side of the equation, we are seeing that a lot of your bad stuff is coming down. Uh, however, the good stuff is coming down too. And on a different side of the equation, the bad stuff is going up, like your cholesterol and your blood pressure. And you know, so we're seeing that, that your weight-related blood pressure, like strained blood pressure, is really low, but you should be healthier for the weights that you're losing and the weight that you are now. And we're trying to figure out why that is. And then, of course, well, it's because I'm not eating vegetables. I'm literally just eating meat products all the time. And so, you know, at the time I was calling myself like a meatitarian, uh, somebody who would literally just eat meat and throw in vegetables occasionally. And sometimes they were non-calorie vegetables like broccoli, where I think you actually burn calories by eating broccoli and celery rather than uh, gaining calories. So it wasn't really helping. Um, it was really just adding foliage or roughage into my diet to try and help the other end of that structured system. So for me to go from that uh, through this like omnivore phase, obviously in the middle, to now being like, you know what, because it's not eating a vegetarian lifestyle where I'm like limiting myself for meat, instead I'm just saying, this is what I'm gonna eat, this product, and this product happens to be made from plants, I'm actually enjoying a vegetarian lifestyle, which is unbelievably strange for me. You know, uh, obviously I think I could probably go totally vegan by just using oat milk and Huel three times a day and that would just all be plant product, I'm pretty sure. So, you know, whether or not that's certified vegan or whatever, I think it would be vegan. And it's super funny, I was thinking about this in preparation for the update and thinking, you know, I told all of my friends before I left Maryland, like, listen, you have nothing to worry about. I'm not gonna move to LA and move to California and become one of those hippy dippy vegetarian, uh, you know, Echo Park hipsters. Sorry, Echo Park, but you know, there's a lot of hipsters there. And uh, I'm not going to turn into that. And then when I went to put a new picture on my website, of course, I picked the most hipster looking picture with me in glasses. And uh, now I'm eating like a vegetarian and, you know, I'm feeling better about it. I'm like feeling more comfortable in my own skin. And so that is kind of a weird change for me. And I guess now that we're past the Instagram preview section the, in the story, I can also kind of like get into some of the nitty gritty, which again, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Nothing is too embarrassing, nothing is too far. Feel free to shoot me a message and I will try to address it. I have a lot of nurse friends and a lot of them have asked about the intricacies of the gastrointestinal process since I brought it up in previous videos especially. And I can tell you that luckily, 10 days in or so, uh, actually before that, but by 10 days, all of the gastrointestinal distress that I was experiencing before has kind of minimized. So um, the gas is almost back to normal, I guess, which is basically none. And the uh, odiferous nature of the gas has also subsided. So it's almost like I had to like just balance my system. Uh, I've given it so much crap for so long that it just had to work out all of the crap. And it's one of those things, I've never never really said that I have a gluten allergy. I don't think I have a gluten allergy. I don't have celiacs, that kind of stuff. But one of the reasons I thrived, I think, on the Atkins diet is just not, it's cutting out bread. And by cutting out bread and cutting out all of the, you know, bread products, I felt a lot better. Now, was that the carbohydrates? Was that the gluten in it? I don't know. But again, with the Huel, I'm cutting out gluten. I'm using the gluten-free, 
uh, low carbohydrate, high fat, high protein variety, the Huel Black, you know, representing with my Huel Black t-shirt, and I'm feeling a lot better. And I don't remember when I went gluten-free before, uh, by the way, another thing I told people back east I wasn't going to do is go be gluten-free, vegetarian, hippy-dippy LA person, and here I am. Uh, but yeah, uh, the times before that I've gone gluten-free, I've also noticed when I've had gluten because the next day I just feel awful. Uh, and maybe that's part of this as well. I'm trying to avoid gluten. I have had a little bit. Uh, we had pizza, uh, so that on occasion. But again, that adds to the crappy feeling the next day. So the gastrointestinal problems have subsided, which was my really my only complaint through this whole process. Uh, one of the things that uh, someone else hit me up about was uh, food cravings, and I don't have cravings per se. Like I said, it's right now Rachel's cooking dinner, and it smells delicious. Uh, on the one side of my brain, it smells very delicious and I really would love to go eat some. On the other side, the smell of the cooking stuff is actually a little too intense. And it's so I'm slightly sick to my stomach and I don't know if it's the smell of the cooking or I don't remember what it's like to be like that excited about food. Um, and I think I said in the very opening video, I have a really messed up relate. Well, I have a messed up relationship with a lot of things, including people. But I have a really messed up relationship with food. And, you know, um, growing up, I, I don't want to blame my parents. It's not my parents' blame. You know, they did the best they can and it is what it is. But we, as Americans, use food as a reward a lot of times. Like, you did really well at the soccer game. Let's go to uh, McDonald's. And um, you know, for your birthday, you can order whatever you want. When I was like 14, I ate a 72-ounce steak. 72 ounces of steak, which I'm pretty sure was more than the volume of an average 13 year old stomach or what it should have been anyway. And it was at one of those steak places where you have to eat the whole thing and then like people eat for free or whatever. And so you have to eat like the fat and like the gristle and the whole thing. And I finished that mother. So my parents were also, you know, always wanted to just try and give my sister and I whatever we wanted. Um, we grew up very middle class and I didn't really notice I was middle class, One, that kind of family. And um, part of that I think was when we went to a place like McDonald's, which was a treat and eating out, it was like, get whatever you want. And I remember being like eight, seven maybe, and saying, I want a Big Mac, extra value meal, super sized, which again is an insane volume of food for such a little person. and. I think my parents bought it to teach me a lesson, like don't order that kind of food because you can't finish it. And I was probably two thirds of the way through, I stood up at the table, like on the little plastic bench side of the table and let out a roar that wasn't a roar, it was a burp, it was a loud burp. And then I sat down and I finished the meal, which should not have been possible for an eight year old, seven year old, whatever. And I have a messed up relationship with food. So I need to not only get into the eating and the food and the process, but get into that relationship and just say like, is it good that maybe it makes me a little sick to my stomach to smell good food cooking? I don't wanna to go too far the other way either. I don't wanna make it so that my relationship with food is super messed up in the other direction. And then I'm, you know, like mainlining Huel via intravenous uh, in ejection, injection just because I don't wanna to have to eat anything or, you know, there are a lot of ways you can have messed up relationships. A lot of people have different different problems with food, and mine is too much. That's how I've lived my life. So I, I think that this is helping me uh, restructure that life because the way that I got into this, of course, long-winded, uh, is that I do feel full. I don't get, uh, you know, hunger pangs, and I don't feel, un, you know, like I need to snack between meals. Uh, I haven't had a really great structure to my day either because, you know, um, quarantine. So it's weird that I wake up a little later and then lunch is a little later and then dinner is always a little later here. They always tend to eat on like, you know, Spanish hours basically, like dinner at nine or 10. So, you know, my eating is off as well. And then sometimes we're up to like one or two o'clock in the morning and I feel like I am hungry. I could eat. Is that a snacking thing? I don't think so. I think it's a 450 calorie meal at breakfast, lunch, and dinner is 12, 1350 calories and 200 uh, and some pounds, so I should be eating like 2,200 calories a day. So I'm probably just hungry uh, and I could eat another meal. But then the idea of making a shake and eating it and then going to bed a half hour later also is kind of like, is that a healthy way to deal with this relationship I have with food? And is replacing the snack that I would eat with an even bigger 
meal the solution there. Probably better to eat early and more often, and I just don't think to do that. So, so luckily, uh, getting involved in the Hooligan community, uh, I went to Reddit and I went to some of the boards uh, on the Hule website, and basically, I don't know why I didn't think of it, but it's just like, hey, cut the amount in half. And if you take one scoop and you make it with, you know, like water, which is not fantastic, but I could probably get down, then you get a little bit of the calories on your system, not as much as you would with milk or with oat milk especially, but you do get some calories in your system. And then you also have some food in there that they can process and you don't feel hungry anymore. And it's a very low calorie snack. I think it's like 150, 200 calorie snack. Um, as opposed to the 450 or 500 or so that I'm eating when I'm having oat milk and PB2 in with uh, the heel. And I don't know why it didn't occur to me, but yep, there, there's a solution. I absolutely could just make a snack. And it's the kind of thing where like, I have been f trying to find that magic spot where it's like not too frozen, but also not too like liquid. And we'll figure out how, when that comes around. But I also know that it is a special treat to get it all the way frozen like almost solid and then just sit it on the counter for like 20 minutes and let it melt down just a bit it's ice cream it's essentially ice cream but it's good food and it's fueling my body well so you know maybe uh 150 one spoonful of that and then put it in the freezer and maybe a little extra pb2 to make it extra chocolatey and, and peanut buttery and let it freeze all the way up and then eat it like ice cream that's the solution and i gotta start solutioning like that rather than just kind of like uh, no, I'm going to push through it because, again, I don't want to swing that relationship with food the wrong way. So I do think that I covered basically all the questions that I had gotten. No hunger pangs, no cravings, which is not true. I, actually, I do have cravings, but I have cravings because I'm reminded of something I like, not because I'm hungry for it. And again, part of restructuring that relationship is saying, hey, yes, you're an adult. You can have birthday cake for breakfast if you want. You can have candy for all three meals. That's a great part about being an adult, but we're not going to do that. Um, so just like anything else, just like if you were eating whatever you wanted, or if, if someone served you, a five-star chef served you meals all the time, you're still going to get like cravings for things that come out of nowhere. Those still happen. Yes. But it's not because I'm hungry. Uh, I'm not getting hunger pangs. I'm not getting hunger cravings, which I think is the important difference between the two. Gastrointestinal problems subsided. So we're good on that. Things have gotten more regular, if you know what I mean. So I'm super happy. And... I'm feeling more energized than I have in a long time. Again, I had some crappy for lunch, so I'm feeling a little down today. Uh, and I, yesterday, I waited till far too late to actually get this uh, made and uploaded. So I'm actually updating as of yesterday, even though I've had my meal for Huel for today, one of them at least. So uh, a little bit of a movie magic. But I think another thing uh, about this experience is that I'm not focusing on a number, on a scale. Uh, I have. I have been keeping track of my weight. I have a couple of apps. Google Fit has been great for that to just keep track of my, my health all along. As I said, I've been going through the sickness and uh, trying to get through that the rest of the way. Let me finish up before I move on. And it's basically that I wasn't sure whether or not trying during sickness was good, but I do feel like now two weeks in, I've given my body everything it needed to uh, fuel itself for this illness. When I don't eat right, I can tell the difference, not only because I feel crappier, but I feel like the symptoms like come back. They're like, he doesn't have reinforcements, go charge. And like, it makes it tries to make a comeback on me and, and then I have to like settle it all down. But I think that my point overall for that was just that like, I don't have bad days. Uh, I have good days and I have neutral days. And I feel like if that's happening while I'm sick, then it's gonna be really easy to have good days once I'm not feeling sick anymore. And it's just, you know, smooth sailing after that. I don't have to worry about, is this tiredness, is this, you know, is it the food or is it me being sick? Am I upset in my stomach because I'm sick or because it's food? Um, I have this nagging cough. Is it the is it the sickness or is there something not right about what I'm eating? It's the sickness. And I don't want to have to question myself on that. And I'll be glad when I can move on from that. But I do feel like still that I'm in much better scenario now, two weeks into this illness, a little more than two weeks into this illness, just because I've had 11 days of giving my body everything that it needs. All right, so back to my last point. Uh, last point was... Basically this, uh, I've been keeping track of the weight. Obviously I have some apps that help me with that. And uh, I've been, and I haven't been seeing like a lot of drastic reduction. Now, I don't know if that's because I've been sick too. I've been kind of steady, a little up, a little down, a little up, a little down. Uh, and I don't know what it is though. I feel like I'm trading some 
bad weight for good weight. And maybe that's just me justifying my head. I, I don't know. I, I'm My phrase of quarantine has been, listen, you're giving me some facts. I'm, I'm applying my training knowledge and experience. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm just seeing that I was taking such poor care of myself that I think that there was a lot of repair that needed to be done. And one of the things that I'm thinking about specifically is I probably did a lot of damage to my liver with the way that I was eating for the last few years or so. So the liver, I don't know if you don't know, is very heavy, it's a heavy organ. So I feel like, you know, as my body's repairing, it has the tools now, it's making repairs to the liver, that I might lose a pound of fat and I'm putting on a pound of weight in the liver or in the intestines or, uh, you know, organ or organs. Um, and it also may be that like my muscles, everybody's muscles have like a place where they are, let's call it stasis, I guess. And I wasn't, I don't have the ability to exercise now and that's super frustrating. I'm looking forward to being on Huel and getting back to the gym and maybe seeing some gains there as well. That will be very nice. Um, as part of my inspiration for this whole process, I've hung pictures up of me different places when I was in better shape. Just as like, hey, if you don't feel like going to the gym, that's fine. Look at yourself in that mirror and then look at yourself. Well, look at yourself in the mirror and then look at yourself. Uh, the way that you used to look and uh, I find that to be very inspirational. I just wish I felt better enough It's not a lack of will. It's a sickness that is keeping me from doing that and the gym being closed Of course because of quarantine, but our muscles have a stasis and you know when we don't take care of them We don't give them the right nutrition and we don't work them. Uh, they can kind of like uh, get smaller but just by starting to take the basic care of yourself they can kind of reach their best potential and once you reach best potential then it's like all right from there we can grow them by going to the gym but i just need to get back to my best potential spot and i feel like part of this experience has been getting my body not just the organs but everything back to its best potential spot um i have noticed that my skin has cleared up let me see if i can give you a little like I had a little bit of an acne thing on my on my forehead that seems to be clearing up. My hair is super healthy. My beard is looking super healthy. I was starting to get some like shoulder and back knee, which was probably just not eating right again. And that is starting to clear up now as well. So I feel like all signs are pointing to good things. And I feel stronger. Is that coming out of the illness? Is it a, like eating right? Is it a little bit of both? I don't know. I haven't been to the gym, so I know it's not that. But I feel firmer. And I think that's the important thing. The skin is getting a little, a little more elastic. The muscle feels firmer. Uh, and I feel like I'm taking all the slack out of it. And I also know that muscle weighs more than fat. So maybe I lose a pound of fat, but I put on like a pound of muscle or half pound, quarter pound, whatever it is day to day. So I see this little like up down motion, but we're staying steady. And I fully expect that if I can get back into getting some cardio, I'll see the number go down a lot. Because then when I start burning more calories, all the food, the fuel is going to exercise and to build muscle and the fat's going to go away. It's going to get burned for energy. But until then, uh, I just kind of have to hope and pray. Uh, I have seen some good results. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it in this light and stuff, but my collarbone back out. I'm very excited about that. I haven't seen that guy in a couple of months. Um, oh, uh, I was taking a picture of mine. I saw like this little crease that you get in your forearm. You know, actually, you can see it in the camera. That's really good. Uh, I haven't seen that guy in a while either. And that's just the border between two muscles. Um, and it had just been all chubbed. And now it's not chubbed anymore. So I'm super happy about that. Um, and I don't like to set goals because I think goals, are, especially when it comes to this kind of stuff, it, listen, I can set a professional goal. And that's great. And it's easy for me to achieve because I'm going to work every day. But for me to say, like, hey, I want to be at a certain place at a certain time. I'm 36 years old and my body is not going to respond. I'm likely to go back to the gym and six weeks in get an injury that's going to like sideline me for a little while. That's where we are, folks. 36 and I feel like I'm falling apart. Uh, another good change though, I'm sleeping a little better other than the illness, which I think the sickness has given me some like weird fever stress dreams, which have been crazy and um, <laughs> kind of left me like feeling very tired. Uh, I wake up in the morning and I'm not getting so much of that like, oh, what is going to hurt this morning? And when I open my eyes and I haven't moved yet, like what's going to hurt new when I roll over this morning? That has kind of actually stopped and I'm not sleeping in the most comfortable, best kind of situation and yet I'm still feeling really good. And I'm not getting those pains. I got I, the only thing that's different from before the sickness to now is the heel. I'm not working out. I'm not doing a lot of things. Uh, I'm maybe more relaxed and less stressed. But other than that, it's just giving your body the right kind of nutrition. So uh, this has been your 30-minute heel commercial. <laughs> 
I don't know. It, it's hard for me because again, the negatives were so small and have now kind of rectified. Uh, you know, I'm sure again once we can go out, I'm gonna go out more often. I'll eat stuff that's not human more often. And I'll regret it. And you know, I want to see that number on the scale go down. Uh, I want to like more what I see in the mirror. Um, I getting to the goal thing. I would love to post for the first time in my life a shirtless picture on social media, even when I was in my most unbelievably best shape at 26, 10 years ago. Jesus Christ! I, I wouldn't go shirtless. I would just like put on a wife beater, and you know, I was hitting the gym twice a day. I was in law school, so it was like gym, school, gym homework sometimes a third time at the gym or like go swim for a little while or go relax in the spa for a little while and then you know bed i had a really stable life and i was eating a lot better obviously there i was on the atkins diet and working out all the time and i, I don't have the time at 36 to do that i was i'm not a student anymore so i don't know that if i couldn't do it then that the 36 year old dad bod is the one that everybody wants to see but for me it will be a big step if I can uh, get that done. And I've, uh, one of the things I've been taught, oh yeah, my, uh, I have a whiteboard that we usually keep here, thereabouts here. And one of the things to do during or right after quarantine is to go get a tattoo. And I want to get a tattoo uh, on my chest. And uh, I would love to be able to show that off to people, but you know, I'm not a take the shirt off kind of person. Uh, I'm not even a take the shirt off to get the tattoo kind of person. So I'm kind of going to have to figure out how that's going to work. I need to get in good enough shape that I can get the tattoo I want and then go get it and then show it to people afterwards. So uh, I guess those are goals if you want to see them as goals. For me, it's just about liking what I see enough for me not to care what people are going to say. And a lot of this, a lot of this is mental. A lot of this is emotional. And um, I'm, I think I'm coming more to terms with that, that it's got to be a bigger deal than just changing what you eat. It has to be an attitude change um, and it has to be a way of life change. And uh, it's strange because, you know, I had a lot of support going through when I was doing Soylent. I had a lot of support when I was doing Atkins. A lot, a lot of support doing Atkins. Uh, a lot of naysayers too, but a lot of support. But I just feel like whenever I have a question, uh, I have a place I can go to ask that question. And whenever I have a problem, I just have to Google search and it pops up. And maybe that's just a benefit of the time because things are different now than they were 15 years ago when I was doing this thing before. But I don't know. I feel good. I feel hopeful. And uh, it's good to feel hopeful especially when things can be so crappy uh, around you. Anyway, if you hung out for this whole thing, thank you. Um, I just ramble on and on and on. That's just how it is. Check out my brand new internet radio show where I answer your questions. Rob explains everything, um, which is actually something I'm planning. But uh, just the idea of I'd be able to ramble on for four hours. No one can stop me. That would be interesting. And I don't have to edit afterwards, so, which is the mission. Now. If you guys are interested, check out Huel.com. That's where you can find uh, a link and try it yourself. Uh, I have my next two weeks in transit. I'm going to receive them soon. And they're about to send out my third two weeks, which would be weeks five and six. And uh, all of that stuff is being delayed because of the quarantine. So they're basically sending out ahead of time to make sure that I'm not without it, which is a little bit scary um, to like have to like transfer to full like eating regularly and then back to heal. I'd really like to not do that. So fingers crossed that that's going to get here in time. Uh, thank you guys for checking out the video. Uh, if you want to see, find the post on social media, it's hashtag Rob Tries Heal. And uh, you can find me on all your social media at Robert N. Cheek, uh, except for YouTube, which is just youtube.com forward slash Rob Cheek. This video and all the videos will be up there if you're checking out on Instagram. If not, if you're watching on YouTube, they're on Instagram too, at Robert N. Cheek. So thanks for hanging out with me, and uh, I'll update again in a couple days. Probably not every day. I just don't feel like that's necessary. It's not enough change, but uh, in a couple of days. And uh, maybe I'll start, start filling out this whole t-shirt a little better by that time. So thanks, everybody. Take care. Have a great week.